how I love him because he first loved me. We greet you this morning with Jesus' joy because the joy of the Lord is my strength. I thank God today for who he is in each of our lives and I say good morning, New Mount Olive, good morning family and friends, good morning co-workers and those of you who truly love God. We would like to announce that uh, Brother Leroy Brown's homegoing service will be this Saturday uh, at 11 a.m. The viewing is 9 to 10.45. 10.45, the family will pay their final respects, and the homegoing service will be from 11 to 12. May God bless you and may the peace of God be with you. We are uh, exercising all of COVID-19's restrictions, social distancing. You must wear a face mask and the capacity is 50 people. God bless you today. As we look this morning in the word of God, in the book of John, the 20th chapter. John, the 20th chapter chapter. Amen. We're going to read verses 24 through 29. Verses 24 through 29. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Father of all life, we give you glory. Father of all life, we give you praise. We thank you, God, that we can come this morning and lift up hands to glorify and magnify the God of our salvation. Thank you for last night's sleep. Thank you for your angels watching over us, protecting us, shielding us from all hurt, harm, and danger. Now, Father, as we come to your word, I decrease that you might be increased. Speak to me, speak through me, and speak for me that your word will be proclaimed. Speak until someone will give their life to you and say, Father God, that you are the way, the truth, and the life. It is in Jesus' name that we pray this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. As we look this morning in the book of John, the 20th chapter, verses 24 through 29. These words have been recorded. But Thomas, one of the 12, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples, therefore, said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, except I see the, in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hand and reach hither thine hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believe it. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Verse 29, Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet 
have believed. The word of the Lord is already blessed. As we look this morning at John, the 20th chapter, verses 24 through 29, the Lord has given me the, the title of Life's Scars. Life's Scars. We fully are aware that life itself will give all of us some scars. Regardless of our ethnic background, regardless of our cultures, regardless of our educational status, regardless of our social positions, and regardless of our neighborhood. Beloved, we all have scars. Philippians 2, 6 and 7 says, Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Scars remind us that Jesus remains human just as he remains divine. Scars remind us of our suffering and the pain that was encountered during the acquiring of that scar. Imagine Jesus with scars on his hand that every time he looks at his hand or his body, he is reminded of his sacrifices that were done on Calvary for our behalf. Scars, scars, scars remind us of the humanity of Christ. Those scars remind us of his love for us. Scars that make us real, uh, believable and trustworthy. Scars seem to make people more human. Scars remind us of our uh, world and we realize that there are no perfect people in it. Why? Because we all have scars. Life would not be realistic if we see children who have no injuries or scrapes on their legs or on their arms, or if we see children who have no boo-boos on their heads or on their faces. Life would be unrealistic if we see teenagers that have no acne on their faces. Life would be unrealistic if we see older people that are aging and they have no aging marks or wrinkles or gray hair or gray in their mustaches. No scars are on their bodies from life's struggles. Life would be unrealistic. Wouldn't we become suspicious? Why? Because everyone has experiences in their lives which in a lot of cases result in life's scars. Life's scars are a reminder of something that has occurred in our lives. And most of the time, that scar reminds us that it was unpleasant. Each scar that we have represents a time and a place in our lives. Most scars indicate that something 
transpired that was not, that did not make us happy, and that something has occurred that you nor I will probably ever forget. Usually, it is a permanent mark for us to readily see and remember. Isn't it amazing, beloveds, that the tongue is probably the only part of the body that you cannot find a scar. You can bite the tongue <laughs> and it will heal itself. It doesn't need medication to get better. It, uh, it repairs itself and it leaves no physical scars. It is believed that the tongue is the strongest muscle in our body. However, it is difficult to find any definition of strength that would indicate this. There is no way to measure strength, and the tongue consists of eight muscles that apparently does not get tired and is constantly moving. The tongue, the tongue, however, leaves much damage when you use it to speak against your brother or your sister. First Peter 3 and 10 says, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no God. Proverbs 18 and 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Some of us have scars on our bodies from the various sports that we have played in our neighborhoods, in junior high, in high school, and in college. Some of us have scars on our bodies from the armed forces, from the war, from our jobs, from surgical cuts and incisions, from riding a bike, from cooking, and from various accidents. Romans 8 and 18 says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Some of us have emotional scars. Emotional scars. We are walking around smiling and trying to act normal on the outside when in fact we are dying on the inside. We are feeling inferior. We are feeling incapable. We are unsure about life itself and we are on what I call an emotional roller coaster. Each and every day of our lives. Someone this morning doesn't know whether you're coming or going. Some of our emotions, scar, our emotional scars, are in desperate need of medical help. Some of us are walking around with a band aid on an emotional scar, when you need emergency major surgery. You are scarred and frightened and need to be placed in ICPU, Intensive Care Prayer Unit. Why? Because many of us hold on to situations. We hold on to situations that sometimes we cannot control. Situations that sometimes weigh us down. Situations and circumstances that we have a mindset and trauma about long after.
after it has become apparent to all. But we are still being damaged long after the event has ended. Today, beloved, please take it to the Lord in prayer and allow him to fix your scars, be it emotional or physical. The scripture this morning in John 20, verses 21 to 23, and it reads, I will read it again for you. It says, then said Jesus to them again, peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> what whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. They are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. So I say to you this morning, you've got to let it go. I want us to be very mindful today that the Apostle Paul was one person who suffered greatly on this earth. Paul was stoned. Paul was shipwrecked for a whole day and a night. Paul uh, received 40 stripes being whipped from the Jews. Paul's scars, though, served a purpose. God gives us scars to remind us that we have been healed, to remind us that we have been delivered. God gives us scars to remind us that we have been restored. God gives us scars to remind us that we have been, hallelujah, set free. It was Brother Ralph Andrus who said, don't rehearse and nurse your hurts. Telling everybody you meet about your scars. Keep living that hurt over and over again every day. There are people who become redundant in being, uh, in informing someone else of what this scar and that scar and this scar and that scar and this scar represents. And he's saying, don't rehearse and nurse your hurts. Let it go and move on with your life. Remember to tell it to the Lord before you tell anyone else about your life scars. Don't tell the Lord last, but tell the Lord first. 1 Corinthians 1 and 27 says, But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Well, our scripture today tells us about the infallible proof of Christ's resurrection was his showing himself alive. We had an account of his first appearance to the college, I'd call it, of his disciples. On the day on which he rose, he had sent them the findings of his resurrection. But to conform their faith in him, to confirm their faith in him, he came himself that they might not have it by hearsay only, but might themselves by being eyewitnesses of his being alive. The disciples 
then later told Thomas. Thomas was called Didymus, who was one of the 12 disciples. What the Lord had said, and in telling Thomas later about what God said, Thomas was the one known as unbelief or doubting Thomas. So Thomas said to them, he said, except I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into the side, I will not believe. Jesus could have allowed Thomas to just keep that statement that he made. He could have just said to Thomas, well, you keep on doubting me, Thomas, and you keep on with your unbelieving self because I know that I am the resurrection and I am the life. But because of the heart of our Lord and Savior, he desires that everyone be saved. So therefore, he met them eight days later. The disciples had gathered together in a room and they had shut the door because they did not want anyone to know that they were having a private meeting. And they began to talk. But while they began to talk, here comes Jesus walking in the door. And Jesus began to look at them. And Jesus starts out by telling Thomas and the others these words. Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and reach thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, he knew because he reached and he felt in Jesus' hands and in Jesus' side. So all Thomas could do was to admit who he was by simply saying, my Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. But blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Beloved, many of us today have not seen Jesus, but we believe because we see him in his attributes. When we wake up early in the morning and we hear the birds chirping, when we see the sun shine, we can shine one day and the winds can blow the nets. When we see the rain trickling from the sky and we see the snow coming down, now we're seeing tornadoes and hurricanes. When we look around and see the animals and all that they do, we can see a brown and white cow eating green grass and producing white milk. We know that there is a God somewhere, that there is someone that is greater than you and I. His name is Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. I need you to know that life's going
of Christ. Those scars remind us of his love <laughs> for us. We can't help it when it hurts. And when the hurt comes, and it will come, beloved, but we can help it when the hurt continues to last. Give it to the Lord and allow the Lord to work it out. I close with 2 Corinthians 12 and 10. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. I take pleasure in reproaches. In other words, I take pleasure in necessities. I take pleasure in persecution. I take pleasure in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Hallelujah. Life's scars. We all have them. We can deal with them by taking them to the Lord in prayer. God bless you. See you Wednesday at 1030. God bless.